Hi, welcome to Yoga Today. My name is Nisha Zollinger. This class is a short lecture that's an introduction to our series on the koshas, or the layers of the body. So kosha literally means she. And if you think of your body, you could perhaps think of it as not just one layer, but multi-layers, kind of like layers of an onion. Though in this model of the koshas, the layers go either from gross or dense to subtle, or you can go from subtle to dense. I'm going to guide you through this learning from dense to subtle. And so there's five sheaths of being, the physical body, the body of vitality, the body that is the mind and the emotions, the body of deep wisdom, and the body of bliss. We'll start with the physical body because that's what we all relate with and really connect to as we move through the world. A lot of us are more in our head and that's why yoga asana is so great for us. But the name of the sheath of the physical body is called the Maya kosha, and that could be translated into the food sheath. So that which is made up of food, right? It's physical, it's dense, it's real. So as you just tap into your physicality, of course, there's many, many layers of physicality. You've got muscles, you've got bones, you've got blood, you've got other liquid, you've got organs and nerves and vessels, so much physicality. And that's all included in this outermost layer. So as you just tap into that, ask yourself a couple of questions like, how does my physical body feel? And can you name a few things of how you're feeling right now? Like, I am stiff, I am sore, I'm feeling clear in my body. My muscles are tired, my digestion's a little sluggish. So all of those kind of things, that's the language of the Anamaya Kosha. The next layer of subtlety is the layer of vitality called the pranamaya kosha. Now, pranamaya kosha, you, I'm sure, recognize the word prana, the vital life force energy, which we often move through the body with the breath. The prana pulsates, it oscillates, it has spanda. That's a Sanskrit word for this vibration, this sacred tremor, and we want the prana to oscillate and move through the body. The pranamaya kosha contains all of the nadis, N-A-D-I, the energy channels that prana moves in. It also includes all the prana values, the different directions and functionality of prana. We talk a lot about prana vayu going up, the wind going up, and ah prana vayu going down. Those are the most fundamental two pranas. This system also contains your chakras. So these psycho-spiritual centers along the midline, the midline, right, the sashumna nadi, the main energy channel, and the right and the left, the pingala and ida channels are also contained within the pranamaya kosha. So it's a big one. And so when you tap into that and hear the language of the pranamaya kosha, you're just checking into your energy. How do you feel today energetically? Do you feel balanced? Tired? Caffeinated? Groggy? Even? Vital? Exuberant? Those kind of words, like how does your energy feel? And we know we're unbalanced when we are able to rest at night, and be awake in the day, because again, we want prana to pulse, whether in diurnal rhythm from day to night, or there's many, many micro pulsations as this system is quite complex. The next layer, moving toward more subtlety, is the layer that is called the monomaya kosha, and so that is the mind body. This also contains emotions, so everything that you feel and think. 
So mana meaning mind, your ability to perceive, your mind labels and catalogs things and like puts them in places and you know even you know judges it also includes discrimination and ego those are the three layers of the mind so a lot of us love yoga because it gets us into our body and a little bit out of our mind our mind's not a bad thing it's actually a really beautiful thing it's just that so much of the time we're here and so it's so refreshing and you've probably noticed over time that this is the way yoga works we actually bring the mind into the breath and the breath into the body to experience so much more sinking up so the mind body has so much ultimacy in everything our thoughts and our perceptions we're ultimately invited to work with our thoughts and our perceptions because as we dive deeper into philosophy and practice in general we find that there is no such thing as absolute reality it's all based on perception so as yogis we learn how to work with our mind and emotions in such a way that we can have a clear perception that's not as occluded by our presuppositions and judgments which of course are part of the manamaya kosha. So the first stage always in our practice and it might be a very very long stage I'm still in it is being witness to what's coming up in this realm in this terrain and being okay with it letting it process and then the stuff that doesn't just process through actually really doing some deep work which isn't necessarily in the terrain of yoga asana we do a little bit of it in this series but that moves into a little more journaling or conversation or spiritual study and you know maybe even deep meditation as well and so this layer of the mind is such a beautiful thing and yet those thoughts and those emotions in my own experience can feel so dense and have such a grip on everything that is and as we start to move with the body and with the breath the grip lessens right they're still there as long as you're human you're going to have thoughts but you might notice that after a practice your thoughts are maybe there's a little more space between thoughts maybe the emotions don't feel so big So what starts to happen which I'm sure you've noticed is that these layers kind of start to sink up and become less sticky and flow with one another because really what's behind these first three layers is deep intelligence and bliss. Those are like light and we want those to be able to shine through and inform the outermost layers, right? Because it never goes away until we go away but underneath the mano maya kosha is the vigyana maya kosha which really means deeper intelligence and it's referring to the deep wisdom and the deep intelligence even psychic intelligence in the body the way i connect in with this the way I locate the vigyana maya kosha is allowing myself to feel my heart beat and to rest into my organs and sense deeply that there's such a wisdom inside that my mind could never create like somehow the heart knows how to take in the oxygen from the lungs and push it into the blood and through the body and cells know when to die and when to turn over and the immune cells know when to go in or <laughs> pull back like this deep intelligence and this is so important that we do our yoga practices our movement our breathing our mindfulness noticing the quality of our thoughts working with our thoughts practicing awareness so that this inner intelligence this embodied intelligence can emanate through and not get stuck 
Because when the Vingiana Maya Kosha, when that intelligence gets stuck and can't kind of go through these layers because maybe the thoughts are too dense or the body's just like clogged and stiff, and I don't even mean bendy, but just stiff, that that's where the lack of coherence starts or dis-ease. So that's the Vigyana Maya Kosha. And then the Ananda Maya Kosha, the deepest and most subtle of the layers. Like the Vigyana Maya Kosha, it can't be painted by whatever is going on on the surface. So Ananda means bliss. And bliss is not necessarily that state of happiness, it's just a state of being. It's that beautiful ability to abide in whatever is with a sense of joy. But it's not a mood kind of a joy, it's just an isness. And so the bliss body is like the depths of the ocean, perhaps. This is an analogy. It doesn't actually matter what's going on in the surface. There could be waves and turbulence, but deep inside the ocean, there's just this ease of being, and that's inside all of us. Spontaneously, you might feel that ease of being, but for most of us, we have to practice to get there. We've got to move our bodies, we've got to breathe, we've got to be mindful and look at how we are with our thoughts, our judgments, and even our emotions. I hope that this intro gets you really excited about a physical journey and some more inquiry into these koshas and how they can uplift you in your practice. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you tomorrow on Yoga Today. Namaste.